All right, guys, so, so today's video is gonna be a lot different than most of our videos, I believe, because we're using gun. Cody met up with a guy, I honestly don't know. His name's Leland, he is like the guru of guns, and he was talking to us about the uh, usage of lead bullets versus a copper-based bullet, I believe, and how the lead, like shooting varmints and stuff, and then the raptors, which are birds, apparently, they come and eat, and then they it's its not good on them. It's been killing raptors and stuff, which are birds, not velociraptors. He said, we're gonna have ballistic cell, and he said guns, and I said, I'm in, let's go try to learn something. Today, that's exactly what we're doing. Shooting ballistics and targets. You remember this guy, Jesse? Hey, hey. get really excited, I can't yeah. tell. Like, I, I know you're getting though. jittery. We've got guns <laughs> out, we've got ammo out, there's things well, going yeah, on. Yeah, trigger tell fingers us, feeling itchy. <laughs> tell, me what, tell me what I can learn from today. So I run the non-lead hunting education program. It's a program that started at the Oregon Zoo and we've been building partners across the state. We've recently gotten a big grant through uh, the Pittman Robertson Act through ODFW and the partners that we have, um, we're providing all the match. And part of that is to buy ammo so people can try it. Um, the big thing is non-lead ammo provides great performance, you know, high weight retention, good expansion, good penetration because of that weight retention. But because it's made of a copper or a copper alloy, it doesn't fragment the same way as lead. You don't end up with having to deal with fragments in cleaning the animal. And also what we leave in the field doesn't have any unintended impacts on other scavenging wildlife. Versus um, where you're coming out with me with the um, the raptor thing, the birds eating. Yeah, exactly. And then right, that so does harm them. Yeah, the absolutely. Lead. And there's lots, there's over 500 published studies um, worldwide that oh, wow. show that lead has impacts on wildlife okay. that consume okay. it. And so, you know, a lot of that early on was based around waterfowl, right? Because it's such an obvious yeah. thing, right? Oh, we're shooting all these small pellets out. But we basically solved that with the regulation in 1991. But we're still seeing lead exposure in eagles. Big game um, stuff. Yeah, a lot from big game, but also from things like squirrel hunting or coyote oh. shooting, right? We choose frangible bullets for that because they're effective on small animals. Right. But the more fragments you have, the more likely they are to be consumed. The smaller they are, the easier they are to eat, the more quickly they get digested. Gotcha. So it all kind of feeds back. And we may not be decimating populations, but I had someone ask me the other day, you know, if you went out with someone and they shot a raptor in front of you. Bird, bird, right? Yeah, so something like bird. an eagle or a hawk, gotcha. you know. Gotcha, Would you keep hunting with them? No. Right, and so unfortunately, and a lot of us have no idea, and I was just in the same boat, someone showed this to me and I was an invasive species removal biologist. That's my background. You know, I shot, you know, feral pigs and goats in Hawaii and mouflon sheep and things like that to deal with conservation issues. You know, they have sure, serious sure, sure, impacts. Sure. Yeah. I didn't know about this as a professional biologist. So how can we expect the public who wants to know about it either? Sure. So that's where I see my job, right? Is to share information so people can make a choice. Sure. You can't make a choice if you don't know. And first you gotta gather the information to make right. your, okay. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha, and that's kind of what we're doing today. We're seeing the difference kind of between yep. the performance and lead-based bullets yep. and copper. Is that copper? Yeah, copper generally, copper, copper alloy, gilding metal, which is what they jacket most bullets out of. Okay. It's got a little okay. bit of zinc in it. Um, Sweet. It just changes the material a little bit. So what we'll probably do to start, right, is we'll shoot our rifles with what Whatever, lead ammo they're already sighted in on. Make okay. sure they're on paper. Um, because you start with a new bullet and you're not on paper already, right. you're just you're all over the wasting map. ammo. Yeah. 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 So we get them on paper and then we try a couple different types of non-lead ammo in these different rifles. Because like any ammo, right? You gotta try different things to see which one fits the rifle best. Sure. You're basically tuning the ammo to the rifle. To the gun. So that's the goal, shooting the targets, looking for accuracy. Because I don't care what your bullet does. If you don't pull it where it, put it where it needs to be, it's Doesn't not gonna matter. be effective, right? First things first, get the bullet where it needs to be. Okay. Then after that, we can take a look. We've got some barrel setups where we can test terminal performance. So we got water jugs lined up and you just shoot through those and you can look at expansion, weight retention, Sweet. penetration to a certain extent in those. You know, all these ballistic tests, it's not flesh, it's not an animal. So it's a little bit different, but, but it's still, a fair it's comparison. Show perform the performance. Yeah, exactly. So we're comparing one to the other through the same material and seeing how they work. And then we've also got some ballistic gels to shoot, which are- Sounds fun much closer to animal tissue um, perfect and give you and capture the entire wound channel so you can see what that looks like from start to finish what he's saying is my old old 
This is Man, where that thing is beat. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. The performance of this thing is unbelievable. I believe it's I, straight I just, up lead. I believe it's everything against what we're doing today. But uh, this is what I've used for years. I'm hopefully going to learn something about maybe switching over bullets from this to something a little bit better for for wildlife or for for whatnot. And yeah, for, I mean, and for per performance. Performance wise, you know, I, I I switched initially because I was working a project where it was required. They said, yeah. you're shooting in this area, you have to use non-lead bullets. And I said, what are you talking about? That's when they showed me all the research. Gotcha. And I said, how did I not know about this? Right. Now I do. And once I switched, I've been incredibly happy with performance. Sweet. I have shot a lot of animals and I think I've had less than five. I've even had to track, you know, most of them have been down within 30 yards. Full penetration, good damage. Nice. You know, you hit a bone, bullets not blowing apart. You, you're gonna you're gonna have the bullet working and doing what it's supposed to do gotcha is there any it's numbers you can there. give do you do you know any numbers as far as damage to wildlife or any is there anything like that that you have like hard evidence of yeah so if you look at bald and golden eagles they sure. they send all found bald or, or dead bald and golden eagles generally get sent to the national wildlife health center and they'll, okay. and they'll check them out they'll even store them or they'll actually they'll study them and can look at sources of death. And so they did a study like that looking from, I believe it was the late 70s to uh, around 2013. It was about 30 years. What they saw, there's four main causes of death for those two species of eagles. Poisoning is in the top four for both. For eagles, it's number one. It's the number one cause of death. For golden eagles, it's the fourth leading cause of death. Lead poisoning is over 50% for both of those species. Wow. And that's only the found so animals, right? Right, 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 right. right. There's been studies looking at free-flying birds. And the way you test for lead, right, is you look at blood because it gives you, okay, you're exposed right now. Yeah. Um, it's a couple of weeks. It stays in the blood, and then it goes into other organs or gets kind of worked out of the body a certain amount. Looking at free-flying populations, they're looking at exposure, which is often over 50% at very high levels where you're looking at potential mortality and these are birds that capture and then release so they don't gotcha. really know what happened after the fact but that can range anywhere from 15 to 40 percent at these very high levels wow and it tends to be correlated with hunting season. so they <laughs> test outside of the hunting you know big game hunting season sure. areas and they don't see these spikes and then during the fall there's a big spike in those high levels of lead gotcha. so they're getting exposed to kind of a a source at that time of year what's happening in the fall right i mean oh yeah if it was mining or something else and we've seen the impacts from mining right this is not the only source of lead right. there's other sources out there but those tend to be pretty contained in one area and you're just going to see them around there gotcha we see this kind of landscape wide we look at the future of hunting right i mean hunters we keep decreasing we're a smaller and smaller portion of the population every year as hunters we do a massive amount for conservation through both buying tags sure. and licenses and pitman robertson dollars just the excise tax on ammunition and firearms and bows and arrows that you pay when you buy it and it goes into a federal fund it does huge amount of good i mean you're talking about billions of dollars over the last hundred years that allows for long-term planning for conservation and recovery work that's why we still have elk and um, and deer and wild turkeys and all these different right. game species, right? But we do rely on the public for support. The public has a voice in how their wildlife is managed. And so we need to be making sure that as new research comes forward, showing unintended consequences of our actions, that we can address them. Luckily, you know, they started making the copper bullets in the 80s for performance. These are not a green initiative. This was, I want a bullet that kills my animal better. Right. And now we've realized, well, great. It also doesn't leave any lead fragments behind, so we don't have the issues of lead exposure. So it's a win-win. And then, if we choose this as hunters, we can use this to promote hunting to the non-hunting public as well and make sure that they understand this commitment to conservation isn't just, you know, we're not just saying it. This is, this is very much part of our tradition as hunters. That's a great point. Let's go shoot some, shoot some stuff. stuff. Let's shoot some stuff. <laughs> I'm into it. What ammunition and why? So I am shooting a Remington 7mm mag, uh, 150 grain soft point, and the reason why is because I can find this everywhere. And Leland can touch on the changes that are happening on the copper and being more common, but this is why I've picked this and not gone with loads is because I can pretty much be anywhere in the state or the country and pick this stuff up. So it's an availability issue. Yep. Gotcha. Now, that was my totally. reasoning for it at least. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely continues to be an issue. Copper is a smaller portion of the market. Um, yeah. But 
as hunters, we can change that. If we buy it, they're going to make it. Sure. You know, it's really kind of in our hands you know, as hunters to make that choice. Jerk that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Feels good to warm up the barrel, though, don't it? <laughs> yeah. Whatever I have left is what I decided. Let's try. <laughs> so one of one of the things with the copper, right, is that it's a slightly less dense material. So if you go to a little bit lighter weight bullet, it'll often match the rifling a little better and you'll get better accuracy. Gotcha. But because of the high weight retention, you're still getting plenty of penetration. There's different schools of thought. A lot of the reason we choose a big heavyweight bullet is to make sure it maintains enough weight to push through an animal and cause the damage it needs to. With something that's maintaining 98 or 99 percent, you don't really have to worry about that quite as much. I mean, you still have to be aware of what you need as far as weight for penetration, but you can go a little lighter, shoot a little faster, a little flatter, and still get yeah. adequate penetration. Gotcha. So I'd recommend just going for that center bullseye. Okay. Just to give you some space around and see where it ends up. Okay. Federal started making a copper bullet in their power shock line, which is kind of their more budget oriented line. It's mm -hmm. about the same price. It's 20 to $25 a box for copper ammo, which is really good. You know, you don't get the same design features you get in some of the premium stuff. No polymer tip. It's a pretty wide open hollow point. Um, they don't take quite the same care with the manufacturing process just to keep, keep prices down, but they shoot pretty well. And I've had some people who have used them, have, have taken animals and are really happy with the performance and the ballistic gel testing I've done has been pretty good. Looks like it's my turn. A lot of pressure here. Thought I'd clean the scope a little bit. It's been quite a few years. First bullet I usually use to get the rust out of the barrel, then the second one, third one, usually are fairly decent. That's what we got going here. You can tell they've been in and out of a gun a couple times maybe. Uh, well that's what I was saying when they looked a little beat up. It's, <laughs> the, 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 the front of that has a nice flat with a little rim on it from bouncing around. You ready, Cub? Try this old warrior here. Might have found my new bullet. <laughs> Maybe. So what did Jesse and I learn today? Probably we need to shoot more. Yep. Just because for one, it's fun. And two, ammunition is key. Good. Are you gonna make the switch? If I can find one that works for sure. I definitely will. I see enough benefits in it to gotcha. go for it. Absolutely. Hunting applications. It may be a small part, but it's doing a part, right? In the direction of, of conservation and and uh and a little bit of wildlife preservation sure. yeah wildlife preservation so anyway now comes the funner funner that's not a word comes a different part is we're going to be shooting some water in these barrels go look at groups four that's pretty good that one's this yeah. these four here are the your ammo right yeah it's all copper stuff that's the barnes bullet Gotcha. Loaded by Black Hills. Awesome. Bring and left to right a little bit. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not enough of an instructor to tell you what's it could be. That, yeah, right? it could be just my jitteriness. It's a good little giveaway and right there. Too. Cody's, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. It wasn't paramount that the bullet hits the bullseye. You just want to group is the is what you're going for there. What we're doing now is that's what these barrels, I was wondering what they were for. We put the milk jugs in the barrel and you have to just hit them somewhere in the hole right yeah well the, you kind of want to center punch it because if you hit the edge right you'll get some deflection sometimes oh really um okay and it's hard to line these things up perfectly straight so the more center you hit the more leeway you have kind of uh, similar to lungs right <laughs> you know exactly you hit center if they're angled a little bit weird or something you can get away with gotcha. it gotcha gotcha I'd say you did pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty solid. <laughs> good, good work. I shoot a lot. I shoot a lot. <laughs> you were just high. I mean, you had it strung out, out a little. Trent is blazing it up, shooting good. That's a lot of energy going into there. Yeah, I mean, look to the right, Cody. The bullet's right in there. Right side. Over the so what happened? Slow. 
So how did it get the bullet get there? It probably bounced off the back. Really? Is what happened. It didn't have enough energy to go all the way through the back of it, but it'll bounce off that. So let's see this. Here. So I mean, the thing we're looking for right now really is some fragments. If there's any pieces of copper left behind, or, you know, any metal, but you generally you're not going to find much. Out I think of most copper. of it's right there. Yeah. It's got that kind of a flower. So if you can see, it's peeled back because of the rifling of the bullet as it was spinning. We're going to look for the lead one now. I mean, this is this is the challenge with lead. It works well as a material because it's dense, it's cheap, it's soft and malleable, so it'll expand. Mm -hmm. But because it's so soft and malleable, it tears apart um, under the pressures that we're putting it under. Is that a bunch of lead right there? Probably. So we can just start pouring all that through here. Yeah, there's some bigger chunks. So that's just out of one of those jugs. Huh. There you have it. Got all the lead down there. So there's what we there's usually a bunch find. Of lead in there. Check this and out. And this is what's usually still embedded in that channel through the animal. And like I said earlier, it can be as far as 15 to 17 inches away in some cases. So the partition does exactly what it's designed to do. All right, holds weight in that rear half of the bullet, keeps penetrating, but that front half, it, it comes apart. Fragments out. Yeah. That's the pe that last piece that came off the front end of that bullet right there. So you got banged around a little right, bit. Right, right, yeah. Um, but really, that's where it's at, and it's peeled back far enough that there's no, no longer any mechanical structure holding it in, so it just flops right off. <laughs> I told you that we'd learn something today. That plus birds equals possible death. Well, okay, maybe even smaller than that. These, these yeah, little really. fragments, these little fragments. I mean, that's one of the big issues, right, is those big chunks actually can be less dangerous. The smaller ones are worse. The smaller ones are worse. The good thing about this stuff is, you know, your standard <laughs> ballistic gel, yeah. you have to keep cold. Oh, you this know, your animal, animal protein stuff, this is a, a synthetic, and so you can have it out here in 90 degree heat and it's, it's not gonna melt on you. Which is sweet. All right. So you want to try some different ammo? Or? Yeah, anybody else can shoot. I don't have to shoot whoever. I don't mind. I like flinging lead or or copper or copper or copper. Copper, copper, copper kills. Nailed it. Nice. That's nice shooting that's code. Center punched. Yeah. Nice shot, well dude. done. So this is the um, this, this is, is the copper shock bullet. copper. Power yeah. shock copper. Yeah, both of them were exact federal. Federal power shock is their blue box. It's kind of their budget line for for folks who are looking for a kind of an economical way to, to get ammo and keep hunting. But this is an all copper bullet that you know 30 odd six is selling for 20 25 dollars a box. 25 bucks a box so it's comparable in price totally yep very comparable in price between lead and copper we'll compare those two gels but it looks like the wound channel is very similar <laughs> there it is yeah so what we're testing here is that there is no lead fragments or copper fragments yeah well the ballistic in there. yeah the ballistic gel yeah, you're looking at piece. a couple of things right you you want to compare that weight retention and fragmentation, yep. but you also want to look at the actual cavitation and amount of damage that's in wound there. channel. Right, the wound channel. Gotcha. Um, so we can actually see whether or not that's they so will cool. kill as well. It's so cool how it spirals like that. So if we look, the first ones we shot into water were this nozzle partition and the Barnes um, bullet, and so the partition, what you get back out of that from a 180 gram bullet is 111.3 grains so you've you have lost 60 percent no sorry you've retained 60 percent gotcha yeah so you've lost about 40 percent of that um, you look at the the barnes bullet which is no polymer tip nothing like that it's just a hollow point it lost 
point eight, depending depending on how the wind flows around the scale. <laughs> you you lose a grain, very small amount. That's half a percent or something like that. Through the ballistic gel, you know, you got your your soft point. You know, the Federal Power Shock bullet. Um, Those were one. They were one fifties, I think. They were both one fifties. So they're a little better. Water can be a little bit hard on bullets, but it's not harder than any of the, you know, bone or anything in an animal. Right, right. Um, and then you look at, wow, you know, you, you're generally seeing 99, 98% weight retention. retention. And usually that weight loss tends to be a polymer tip that comes out. Gotcha. That, that really seems to be it. Interesting. And if you compare, I mean, you're looking at in the ballistic gel, right, we shot the all copper power shock copper and that 150 grain soft point power shock and that wound channel between the two you know the width of that is very similar um, to the point of being so you can see lead fragments yeah. Yeah. and you can still see some of the chunk pretty crazy to see the comparison between the two not only here but what's in the gel Leland really appreciate you coming down and like just oh, my walking us through this Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Get Anytime I can get out to the range and hang yeah, out like, and shoot some gel, I'm into it. it. <laughs> yeah. um, so where can people find out more information about non-lead, just education? Uh, so the Hunting with Non-Lead program is a program at the Oregon Zoo, so you can go to the Oregon Zoo and look for it. Okay. Um, the other thing is there's a website, huntingwithnonlead.org, which has a ton of really good information. Cool. Or they can get in touch with me. It's leland.brown at oregonzoo.org so just give me a call shoot me an email whatever yeah so i'll put those links in the description below email thanks again so much for just letting us go and shoot some stuff <laughs> yeah and, my pleasure. Uh, yeah it. i think it's a uh, pretty noble for conservation and what the future of hunting could be you know to, to at least educate yourself and you can make that choice but definitely uh, in the future i'll be looking at non-line stuff so yeah like you say it's a choice but it, it's one that's worthwhile considering for sure for sure awesome Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you would, just hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot more fun videos coming up for you. Yeah, we'll see you next time here on YouTube.